so I just got back from seeing uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and my initial thoughts are I've never felt so mixed about a film before. I really haven't. It was okay, but there were a lot of flaws in it. A lot. Uh, I watched the third one before I uh, saw this one just to kind of, you know, revitalize my memory on everything and I didn't like the third one. Just at all. <laughs> There was so much going on and there was so little time to explain it and nothing really got explained so there was all these subplots and everything just went crazy and you couldn't follow it with what was going on but I'm not talking about the third one I'm gonna talk about the fourth one and overall it was alright nothing that really amped me but it was nothing terrible by any standard or means my the key issues I had with it were it's a pirate movie so you would think there's gonna be some ship battles some pirate action but there isn't there's none the only real pirate action you have is uh, there's one scene where it's a uh, blackbeard has um, he has like a little uh, mutiny started on his ship and he punishes the guy that uh, I guess was supposed to be on watch or something and he has him row this boat out to uh, the sea and you know he's trying to row away from Blackbeard's ship and you know you're sitting there kind of wondering why at first I thought he was gonna run the rowboat over he was trying to chase him see how fast he could row himself away but no he freaking just spews these uh, he has somebody spew these flames right out of the front of his ship and this guy's just engulfed in flames I thought it was the most badass thing and to up it again he spews the flames again on him I'm like well damn <laughs> that's pretty dark um, the, uh, another real, uh, negative was the lack of action. There really wasn't a lot of it to be had. Uh, there was, like, a chase sequence in the beginning between Sparrow and the, some English soldiers. But after that, it's kind of toned down. I mean, the next one doesn't happen for, like, another hour, hour and a half. And that's in the last, like, quarter of the movie. <clears throat> and... Uh, I, I want to talk about some of the characters. Uh, Depp, Johnny Depp is Jack Sparrow. Uh, he does a good job as comic relief, but the problem is they set him up as a protagonist, but he has no motivation to do anything. Uh, he's not after the <clears throat> the uh, Fountain of Youth. He's kind of on a revenge type e type esque mission. You know, uh, he finds out that the Black Pearl was sunk by uh, Blackbeard, but at the same time, it doesn't really establish that that's what he's after. In fact, I don't really know. He, he kind of just accidentally gets drug along into all the mess that he's in. And there was actually one point where he could have just walked out of all of it, but he didn't for whatever reason. I guess it's because he has this sort of love-hate relationship with Penelope Cruz's character, Angelica. And they have, like, this subtle romance. Well, actually, it's not so subtle because... They love each other, but they hate each other. I don't, I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's how they feel towards each other. Where it seems like Angelica, she, she, she wants. There are points where she wants to hurt and maim and kill him, but she, at the same time, she can't bring herself to. Um, and speaking of Penelope Cruz's character, I didn't like her character at all, <laughs> at all. She, she fit into the story, but her character just didn't do much for me. And Penelope Cruz is an actress. Is, she's, eh, nothing spectacular and nothing worth to me. Just, I didn't like her. <laughs> it's the best way I can put it. But Johnny Depp, uh, like I said, he does good at being a comic relief, but he's not protagonist material, or at least this movie didn't turn him into that. And that's my problem, is when your main protagonist doesn't really care about what's going on around him, then why should you? Um, the movie felt long, too. I mean, it was... The movie started at like 6.55 and actually got out of there at about 8.30, so that was at least two and a half hours long. Um, I mean, it, it felt like it wasn't using nothing but filler, but at the same time, I mean, they could still churn out something good within a 90-minute period, if that, but... It's a pirates movie, so it being two hours was expected. It wasn't something I was gonna I'm gonna throw it down for. And most movies by today's standard are at least two hours long. Um, Jeffrey Rush is also in it. He's uh, Barbarossa. You know what would a pirate movie be without uh, Barbarossa in there? 
And he again, he goes crazy with the pirate role. You know, he takes it seriously. He just he just takes it to a whole. He, he's the uh, archetype uh, pirate by all means, and he does a good job of it. He really does. He's entertaining. He's comedic when he wants to be, and you know, he's convincing. And he feels like um, at least up until. Uh, about the middle of the movie, he kind of felt like he was just there, like he was, he just happened to be the guy that was filling in the position for the British commander, because all he really does is give his guys orders, and all of his men are just kind of like questionably loyal to him, and, but at the same time, when he's wearing this, uh, the, this Englishman's outfit, because he's kind of throwing this, uh, facade that he's in the king's service, but really he's tricking everybody, and they never explain how he became a privateer, like it's just one moment he's a pirate and then the next he's in the king's service although he's not really in the king's service but somehow he climbed all the way up to being a captain of a ship that, that just kind of threw me off but i mean he goes he goes the full the full uh deal i mean he's got his hair curled up he's got like a little fake mole on him and he's got all this like makeup and crap on it, it just looks hilarious and it looks kind of awkward and weird but it's still, it's, it was still funny as crap. Um, and, and speaking of which, there's a scene where Johnny Depp is like chained to this chair because King George and all of his little henchmen are like trying to get Johnny Depp to help him find the fountain of youth for you know the glory of England and all that good stuff. And the guy they have playing is the King George is the Harry Potter's uncle from the Harry Potter movies. And this guy does the weirdest facial expressions when he talks. I mean, he's only in it for one scene, but it, he does like these weird lip reactions and his eyes are always like narrowly closed. And he does this weird thumbs up thing. Like he's like something like that to uh, Jeffrey Rush after he's like, yeah, I be going after the fountain of youth for you and stuff like that. <clears throat> but I mean, even for how brief he was in, I was laughing every time he came onto the camera because he was always having, like, like he, like, it was like he was tasting something sour all the time. Um, uh, there were a lot of subplots, and one of them, the one that stuck out the most, and that's just because of how much I hated it, was the mermaid and this clergyman's uh, love story. And what it is, is it's Blackbeard needs... Um, well, actually, Blackbeard, uh, the Spanish, the English, and to an extent Sparrow and Jeffrey Rush, they're all after the Fountain of Youth for different reasons. And it's more so that Jeffrey Rush wants revenge on Blackbeard for stealing the Black Pearl and putting it in this cup or this bottle. And you never, you never find out how he can do that. And then also cutting off his uh, right leg. You know, he wants revenge and he's using this facade as the king's privateer to go out and get a crew and a ship and everything so he can go hunt down Blackbeard. That's his motivation. He doesn't give a crap about the Fountain of Youth. He's after Blackbeard. And Johnny Depp's character, again, he's kind of just drug into everything. Like, he, he gets kidnapped by Blackbeard inadvertently because Penelope Cruz has disguised herself as uh, Johnny Depp, and I don't know how she managed to pull that off with her voice sounding the way it is, a female voice, you know. <clears throat> but... Uh, I forgot where I was, but anyway, um, his motivations just, or, uh, not, not, no, I'm not talking about Jeffrey Rush anymore, never mind. Uh, Johnny Depp just, he just kind of gets drug into everything, and he's kind of forced into all these situations, but he doesn't really do, uh, anything that you would see a, a main protagonist do. Uh, like, he doesn't really, he saves people, but he's, he's not, he just doesn't fit the role as the main protagonist. At least in the sense of an action movie where it needs like a hero to do something. All he really is is this kind of like pseudo treacherous dude. I mean, he's clever. He knows how to get out of all these tight situations that he lands himself in. But at the same time, he's he's kind of just I want I want out of this conflict. Um, there's actually uh, a scene at the end. Uh, I, I've already given some of the movie away, so you know here's your delayed spoiler warning. But it's it's the final scene, the final fight between. Uh, Barbarossa's guys, Jeffrey Rush's guys, and Blackbeard, Blackbeard's guys, you know, they're at the Fountain of Youth, and they're going to fix him to duke it out, and Sparrow just kind of walks in the middle and goes, wait, wait, he hates him, and he hates him, 
So why don't we just have those two fight and the rest of us just kind of kick back and drink rum and all that other good stuff. And they kind of look at each other and they're like, no. And so they clash anyway. He goes, oh, oh, I tried. And then he just kind of scurries off into a corner. And, you know, uh, the, the, the uh, whole plot point is the reason Blackbeard's after the whole uh, Fountain of Youth thing is one of his quarter, I think his quartermaster is one of his uh, loyal henchmen or whatever told him that there's a prophecy where he's going to be killed by a one-legged man. And I guess this guy's also kind of a soothsayer, so that's why Blackbeard believes it. And that's why he's after the Fountain of Youth, so that he can basically become immortal, so this one-legged man won't kill him. Oh, hint, hint. I mean, you know who the one-legged man is, and you know what's going to happen. There's, like, no suspense into the plot. There's, you know, everything's expected. Everything happens the way it sounds like it's going to happen. And that's why prophecies fail in a movie, because it gives away the whole premise of the movie. It gives away the ending. And, uh, actually, about Blackbeard's character, he's played by Ian McShane, who does as good a job as he could, but... I, I don't know if it was just how he felt about the role or bad directing, but Blackbeard just came across as a really boring character because he has all these powers, but they never explain how he got them, where he learned them, why did, uh, how can he really use them. Like, he has these zombie guys working for him and where, like, basically they can't go against him. He controls them. How does he control them? Why does he control them? And where did he learn to do that? You never find out why. He can make a voodoo doll. He makes one of Jack Sparrow, and that's he uses that as his bidding chip to, uh, or has his trump card to keep Jack Sparrow from, you know, walking away from him. And there's actually a point in the movie where he um, he doesn't want to jump off this cliff. He goes, you, you know, when you have that feeling to just jump off a cliff, I don't have it. And he goes to the zombie. He goes, Sir, could you tell me uh, what are my chances of survival if I uh, j if I jump down there? And then the zombie pulls out the doll, throws it down, and you know Jack screams like, "Oh God, oh God!" And then um, the the doll gets kind of washed away, and you know uh, he's like, "Oh yeah, you'll survive." And then two things came to my mind. I'm like, "Okay, is he just trying to make a way for himself to escape? Was he intentionally trying to get him to throw the doll down there?" Or is this zombie just a fucking moron because he just threw Blackbeard's leverage down the freaking well? And I guess it's his love for Penelope Cruz's character. Otherwise, I don't know why he stuck around because as soon as he jumps off that lake, all he has to do is uh, pretty much just, you know, go find the uh, uh, Blackbeard ship, get his uh, Black Pearl back and hightail it out of there even though he has to figure out how to get the Black Pearl out of the bottle that it's in. But, um, anyway, back to Blackbeard's powers. Uh, he can also uh, control his ship with his sword. Like, his sword's magical, but you don't know why. You never find out why. You never find out anything about Blackbeard other than he's afraid of this prophecy and his daughter is Angelica. That's all you ever find out about him. Oh, and he's a notorious pirate that everybody fears because of all of his supernatural powers, but... Even with all the exposition and explanation they put in this movie, you don't find anything out about Blackbeard. And that bothered me because I thought Blackbeard was an interesting character, or could have been an interesting character. He had a lot of interesting aspects. And the Queen Anne's Revenge was a freaking badass ship. I mean, that thing had flamethrowers in the front of it. I mean, I would have liked to have seen that in a naval battle, but you don't see any pirate um, taking on any of the English or the Spanish. And they actually do tease a battle where um, Jeffrey Rush's uh, guys, they spot some Spanish ships. And, you know, Jeffrey Rush is like, Err, err, battle stations, everybody, battle stations. The Spanish are right across from us. We have to kill them. And, you know, it, there's three Spanish ships and one of them. So I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, oh, hey, you know, what are they building up for here? And then he, he kind of looks through the telescope again and the Spanish guy's like, you know, he's just like, <laughs> not even paying attention to Jeffrey Rush over there. You know, his mind's set on getting to the Fountain of Youth, and uh, Jeffrey Rush is just like, son of a bitch. He's ignoring us completely. And then he, like, curses at his men to, like, you know, turn the ship because they're going the wrong way. And the Spanish have absolutely no motivation to just kind of uh, do have anything to do with Jeffrey Rush or his guys. And so... <clears throat> 
back to like the action. Uh, the la the even the last fight was just kind of anticlimactic. It's just uh, Jeffrey Rush and uh, Blackbeard. They go at it and they have this uh, sword fight, but it's kind of ignored for uh, Jack Sparrow fighting with Penelope Cruz and this other uh, guy that's kind of introduced as a kind of uh, some somewhat a protagonist, but otherwise just a character that's there. And it, it focuses more on these three fighting over the freaking, uh, the, this uh, mermaid tier, which I'll explain the mermaids here in a bit, rather than paying attention to Blackbeard and Jeffrey Rush fighting. I would rather see that than these three fumble over a freaking tier in a capsule. Um, Alex, I'll briefly, I'll uh, go ahead and touch up on the mermaids. It's, um, they need these two silver chalices that are discovered or made or something by this Spanish guy that went sailing there about 200 years ago. And you don't know anything, you don't really find out anything about this guy other than he was an explorer and it somehow his ship ended up on a fucking cliff. I was actually, I was actually looking at that like, um, how did that get up there? And... <laughs> They go in there and, you know, the, the whole ship's cursed. If you take one piece of treasure, the ship's about ready to just kind of tumble one way or it's about to tumble the other way. And Jeffrey Rush and Sparrow have, like, this little scrabble for finding the chalices in there. And, you know, the ship's kind of, like, rocking back and forth and all this stuff. And, they, he, you know, they find this map that his corpse is holding in. As soon as Jack takes the map, you know, the corpse just kind of looks over at him and he's all, like, and then Jeffrey Rush is like, don't touch it, don't touch it. So he puts it back, and then the corpse just kind of goes back to its regular position. And um, so they need these two, ch two silver chalices. They need to fill them both with water from the Fountain of Youth, and then they need a teardrop from the mermaid. And then another problem I had with it is that, I guess, mermaid tears expire, so they need to bring the mermaid with them. And at the same time, the mermaid can just magically grow legs. And... I guess Blackbeard just knew this off the get-go, so I was sitting there, like, scratching my head, trying to figure out, well, if they can form legs, or if it didn't shock him, you know, if he wasn't surprised that she had legs, because he displayed no emotion at all at her having legs, he, I mean, he just kind of looked at her like, oh, great, she's naked right in front of me, um, great, what do we do now? And he just... He just pays no attention to it, so I'm assuming he knew that the mermaid would grow legs as soon as she touched land, which makes you wonder... Why were they carrying her in a tank if they knew that off the bat? It just comes out of nowhere because all it is is one of the zombies trips on like this branch and breaks the case and then all of a sudden she has legs. It just, it, it, it came out of nowhere and it's not explained. And anyway, back to the subplot of, or I'm, I'm kind of jumping around, but to the subplot again with the preacher and, or not preacher, but clergyman and the mermaid is, he sees this mermaid and he feels sorry for her and he's trying to help her out and he's like, no, you're you're different from the others because these mermaids are fucking vicious. I mean, they're fucking, they, they're vampires living in the sea. That's what they are. And, um, you know, they attack the crew and they kill all these guys and he's just like, he, you're different, you know. And he, I, I think he's just, he was physically attracted to her and he was mistaking it for... Uh, I guess his romantic feelings, but even still, this shit didn't belong in this movie. It it had no purpose. It served no plot device. It it did nothing for the movie. Well, let me check. Uh, I got is it six minutes, five minutes, something like that left on this, but I am getting close to done. Anyway, um, yeah, it just it it comes out of nowhere and it builds to nothing. It amounts to nothing. Both the character, or the the mermaid character, I had a purpose because they need her tear to, um, you know, use the fountain of youth, and it it just doesn't work out because this guy just falls for her the second he sees her, and you know they they build they build it up, they do build it up, but it. It served no purpose. The clergyman does absolutely nothing but bitch and whine about how Blackbeard's treating this girl. And yeah, he's treating her like crap. But still, it, his character had no purpose at all. I mean, he, he's just there. He does nothing for the plot. He does nothing to help resolve the conflict. And... The, the romance just felt out of place. It felt unnecessary. It took up space that could have been used doing something else, like, I don't know, fighting or something like that. And th this movie had too much exposition to it, too much of explaining how this whole 
fountain of youth thing works and i think they put too much detail into how it works because it's it's two silver chalices both filled with water from the fountain of youth one is a tear one doesn't the person that drinks the fountain of youth uh, or drinks the silver chalice with the tear will be immortal or gains the amount of years of life that this person has and the other person dies a horrible cruel death but at the same time the, the, the mermaid tear expires so you need to bring a mermaid close to it um, my question about that would be, what, what relevance do mermaids have to the Fountain of Youth? Who made the Fountain of Youth? Um, where did it come from? How did we figure it out? Um, how did these silver chalices come to be? Um, what relevance do they have to the, um, to the uh, Fountain of Youth if the chalices are made by a Spanish guy, even though the Fountain of Youth is probably thousands and thousands of years old? likely may either naturally made or was developed by some Aztec or Inca tribe and it just doesn't explain anything it just it's like oh hey this fountain of youth just happens to exist uh, you know rumors and all this other crap and it just it explains it spends too much time explaining everything but it explains nothing because it spends so much time explaining everything so basically it explains nothing if that makes sense but um as a movie, it's not bad. It's really not. I was I wasn't bored by it. I wasn't depressed by it, but it it just wasn't really what I thought it would be. It's not a pirate movie, really, because you don't see pirates being pirates. It's just this rat race for the Fountain of Youth, and you know, it, there's no character. There's no real character development i mean nothing's a stat nothing new is brought into the series really nothing new is established nothing new is introduced uh, the only character that's introduced and carried over was penelope cruz's character and i didn't like her character and blackbeard ship for all the cool crap it had blackbeard for all the awesome you know superpowers he had they did nothing with it it's they introduced it and it's gone and that was my problem with the movie is that it failed to build upon anything that it established. All it is is this rat race. But I'm going to go ahead and say it. The best character in the whole movie is the Spanish commander and they never freaking introduce him at all. You see him in I think three scenes. The beginning um, when he's talking or when Jeffrey Rush spots him and at the very end. That's it. Yeah, I'm checking the time because I don't want to be talking to nothing at all. But all he does in the entire movie is he walks in, Blackbeard just looks at him, gets stabbed by Jeffrey Rush. It's like, oh yeah, ignore this, ignore the guy that's prophesied to kill you for the Spanish that just suddenly popped up and actually, how did they find out where this fountain of youth was? Because they didn't have a map, they didn't have Jack Sparrow guiding them, they didn't have anything. They just show up and you know all these obstacles, all these other guys were overcoming. They just um, they they just brush through it all. So. It's like they just kind of let everybody do the work for them. But anyway, he shows up and he's like, this Fountain of Youth is a pagan monstrosity. We must destroy it. So he destroys the Fountain of Youth, but not before. Jack Sparrow tricks Blackbeard into um, drinking the wrong cup. And in turn, he saves Penelope Cruz because uh, Jeffrey Rush kills him with a sword that was spiked with a frog poison, which, by the way, is not alluded to at all, at all. I mean, he, he, he's, you don't ever see him collecting frogs. You don't see anything that could allude to him, you know, plotting his attempt to kill Blackbeard. And, and all he, I mean, all he does is walk in, destroy the Fountain of Youth, and walk away. He's like, all right, my job's done, he, and I'm gone. He was the single most badass character, and you never learn his name, and he has like a whopping three scenes. Jack Sparrow does good, trust me. He, he's... I liked him. I was entertained by him. He said a lot of funny stuff, but the movie was not what it should have been. And that's my problem with it. <sighs> but to uh, close this up, um, oh, wait, uh, I, I, was, I went off track a little bit. Uh, when Blackbeard dies, he dies to three different things. It was one of, one of the three. Um, he dies to sacrifice, he inadvertently sacrifices himself to save his daughter. Inadvertently meaning he didn't mean to. Uh, secondly, Jack Sparrow tricks him. Thirdly, um, he kind of kills himself. <laughs> suicide, inadvertent suicide. It's not Jeffrey Rush that kills him, it's the Fountain of Youth that kills him because he becomes part of that ritual. So, 
they destroyed their own plot device basically at the very end. It was all for nothing. So I take back what I said about prophecies because the prophecy isn't what killed them. It's the fountain of youth that killed them.